Uh, so, yeah, the Caroline had mentioned this uh, a number of times, and and you heard from from our contractors, uh, Francois, Heather, uh, and Karen. Um, and again, Katie and, and uh, Monique Arts aren't aren't able to be with us today. So I'll just put um, put uh, Heather and and Karen and Francois just on notice. Um, if there are things that you'd like to add at this at the end of this presentation, things that I've missed or or specific. Uh, comments you'd like to bring forward, we'll we'll uh, we'll make that opportunity available. So a little bit of project history. Um, so our first SARPAL uh, species at risk protection on agricultural lands program uh, we ran back in in sixteen and seventeen. Peggy Strankman actually ran this for us, and the idea of this project was to look at uh, conservation BMP applicability across Western Canada, and and really and and make sure that those BMPs weren't contradictory and that we were doing a good job of, of kind of um, unpacking them for the grower. To my understanding, some of them, you know, they, 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 they contradicted one another for individual species. And, and so um, Peggy led that project and we're currently looking at those databases now um, to, uh, to try and make them uh, searchable. So that'll become a bit of a research uh, tool for, for folks working in the species at risk game to use. Um, of course, we know, you know, ecological goods and services valuation has been a big part of what we've been doing at CFGA for the last, uh, you know, half a decade, you know, starting with, with the carbon, uh, with the carbon exploration, developing that Canada grasslands protocol, which Karen Hogan is there, will take us through when she arrives later on. So the Nature Fund project, um, Robin Bloom from Environment Climate Change Canada had reached out and 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 passed you know put this project idea past us and we started that discussion in May 2019 and built out that project concept throughout the summer and and uh, and built the draft budget and and got that September approval. Uh, we launched this project at uh, actually the last in-person AGM that we had, which is here in New Brunswick, uh, in Moncton on November 15th. 2019, so three years of hard work invested. So the idea was to take the uh, habitat and biodiversity assessment tool that had been built originally for the Alberta Environmental Farm Plan. So Alan and, and Carl, Alan Hall and Carleen Schneider both heavily involved in that process in, in Alberta. Um, and, and that, the, the biodiversity and um, habitat management component of the EFPs was one that stuck out a little bit as not having enough detail uh, to, to get the gold standard within the SAI process. And I won't speak to that uh, in, in much detail because it's not, it's not my, my wheelhouse. But Paul, uh, Paul Watson, you know, give him a lot of the credit on this one, really uh, took it upon himself and worked with Francois to build that first really functional communications HVAT tool, as we call it, and integrated it into the Alberta Environmental Farm Plan. Current, you know, and so it just kind of got rolled out over the last year and a half-ish, and so they're getting producer feedback, but it is, it is a component of that. So the idea was is that we would take that Alberta effort and move it across the country. Um, the CFJ was tapped uh, because you know we had done that early work in under the SARPAL program around BMP adaptability, um, but also because grasslands are such an important um, habitat feature for so many species at risk. And if you if you look at kind of the pan Atlantic or pan Canadian approach to to conservation and agricultural lands, you see that you know the the grassland areas of the southern parts of the prairies are, are hot spots for those SAR species. So really, really important. One of the things we sought to do with this project was to change the narrative a bit. Um, species at risk is a sensitive topic for, for a lot of individuals. Um, you know, things, you know, events have transpired in the past that have really made people gun shy and thinking about species at risk on their operations, which really is, is challenging to to protecting these species. So that's where we started to talk about habitat and biodiversity management. And again, hats off to Paul Watson for having the foresight to really lay this down. So when we talk about habitats and maintaining those habitats on our farms, it takes 
um, the species at risk conversation and sets it aside a little bit so we can think about more of, of what we're attuned to doing as landscape as, as farmers, which is managing landscape features. So uh, in the project mentioned taking Alberta and moving it across the country. So we started with Saskatchewan and Manitoba. And that was quite purposeful because the Alberta, you know, if you think about the eco regions in, in Alberta and, and the landscape features that we would see there, you know, similar to Saskatchewan, but, you know, to May Elsinger's, you know, comments, we move into Manitoba, we start to get a little more diverse or changes are, are more profound, I guess, as we move from the Western prairies. And then we also jumped all the way over to Manitoba, to, to Nova Scotia. And so within Western Canada, we use the quarter section uh, as a land identification uh, module. But when we moved to Nova Scotia, we had, we did it purposely. It was small enough and big enough. And, and Nova Scotia Federation of Agriculture was keen to work with us. But it also allowed us to look at using the PID uh, concept of land identification and how that would be built into the tool. So that was phase two. Uh, and so those tools are, are currently being completed and, and uh, our contractors have been doing some beta testing with their stakeholder committees over the last several weeks. And next step will be to move into more detailed stakeholder engagement to make sure those tools are functional for the primary producer. What we've started on this phase two project, and this is 2021 to 23 fiscal years, is starting and working in Ontario, New Brunswick and British Columbia. So we had some launch workshops in these three provinces over the last month. Um, say the Ontario is, is kind of a, a new package for that central uh, part of, of Canada. Uh, again, uh, want to give hats leadership, or I mentioned the leadership from Ontario Soil and Crop Improvement Association. They already had an existing project on the go. Just take a look at this in the province. And we partnered up with them. And, and that's where Monique arts has come on to build that Ontario project. New Brunswick, we're leapfrogging from Nova Scotia into New Brunswick and British Columbia is a, is a brand new start. And, and, and the British Columbia model we anticipate is gonna be our most complex. And uh, so we're biting, we're eating that elephant a bite at a time. Francois is heavily involved in that process. And so we're starting with kind of the central interior, then we're moving a little mainland. And we're, we're gonna bite off those chunks of BC as, as we go over the next several years and piece them all together. Uh, into, into a larger tool. The next, uh, the next, the last objective in the, for the last two years of, of the project, uh, 2023 to 2025, hard to imagine we're talking about 2025, but we're going to complete that work. Uh, we're finding that uh, it takes a little bit longer than the two year time span to, to collect all the data and get all the databases put together and do the training and, and, get the, the, the uh, stakeholder feedback and get, a, get an end product ready to roll out. So um, we're gonna complete our tools in Ontario, New Brunswick and British Columbia and, and get that work done in Quebec, PEI, Newfoundland. So by the time we get to phase three, um, you know, we'll have that, that tool in, in Nova Scotia, New Brunswick. So moving to PEI and Newfoundland um, should be fairly straightforward, we're hoping. Um, the Quebec model uh, working with New Brunswick is, is helping us because it's a bilingual province. So we're, we're getting our, our feet wet on, on how to deliver or provide this tool, both in English and French. Uh, and not to say uh, Serge and, and team from CQPF are gonna leave us right to the end. Uh, as you know, we've, we've started some conversations uh, over the last couple months uh, to, to get started on that project, certainly sooner than 2023. So in terms of what we're what we're doing here, you know, we're building the tool, but we're not leaving it there. So we're going to provide training on the tool and, and how to use it and how to go one on one with a landowner uh, to to deploy the tool. But we're also looking at communications. How do we communicate uh, with the primary producers about species at risk on their operations? How do we transition, you know, from a from a prickly uh, difficult subject to one of, again, how do we manage our landscapes? Because there may be a species at risk that might like to use that habitat. So I think that's important to note that the tool does not identify what species at risk are on your operation. It does suggest what species at risk may be present and what habitat features you might consider protecting in order to provide a habitat for them. So we're trying to meet the growers where they are and, uh, and, and take the 
take the sting out of a difficult conversation. So that's where the communications comes down. And so we've worked closely with the National Wildlife Federation and, and you know, thanks to Carolyn Callahan, the team of the Canadian Wildlife Federation for their support in this, hooked us up with uh, Dr. Adam Reimer, who works out of the NWF uh, out of the Michigan office, has done a tremendous amount of work uh, through his PhD thesis and, and, and ongoing work in understanding uh, the barriers to adoption of, of conservation BMPs and, and starting to, again, uh, take, take the sting out of those conversations. And, and so he's, we're providing these workshops on, on how, again, how to meet growers where they are and get an effective communications going, which is largely founded in trust. So, you know, the team player model, um, this has been, this has been, it's been a really enjoyable project because we've brought a lot of different stakeholders, a lot of, a lot of, met a lot of really interesting individuals. And what we've found, especially through our communication workshops, that we were able to build a bridge between the conservation and the agricultural communities. And what I mean by that is in our communications workshops, we had agronomists coming to the table saying, I need to know more about conservation and how to manage habitats on behalf of my growers. And we had conservation uh, agents coming to the table saying, I need you know, to, to further my conservation efforts, but I also need to be able to talk more effectively with growers uh, about primary production. So these two groups that maybe had been, you know, at odds in the past, they came together and had really open and honest conversations on how they could support one another's efforts. And I think that's where, what we're bringing forward here is how do we, um, you know, work uh, as practitioners and stakeholders on, you know, the agronomy and, and the conservation side to, uh, to provide that, uh, that habitat protection long-term. Yeah, so the process was new. I think we've, we've ironed it out, uh, Francois, I've seen you here on my screen. I think, you know, we, uh, we took that Alberta model and, and we, we, we truthed it in Saskatchewan, Manitoba and Nova Scotia. And now I think we've got a pretty solid uh, work plan that we can apply, you know, deploy in most provinces that, that gives a chronological list of, of tasks that need to be completed. And, and at the end of it, out comes, out comes a tool. Um, one thing I will note, you know, the, the, original, the original intent of this was to link these HBAT tools to the, to the electronic environmental farm plans in each of the provinces. What we found was that, you know, each province was, was at a different level in terms of, you know, moving towards an online EFP, uh, and, you know, integration of these sorts of tools. So as opposed to, you know, waiting for those to come along, we've actually created um, each one of these tools has its own password protected website uh, that lives within the CFGA website. So it is widely accessible for folks if they want to use it to, to assess, you know, either their own farm or if they are in the conservation or agronomy fields and they want to do this work on behalf of their clients. Um, they can gain access to it. It's not public access. You do need to apply uh, for a username uh, so that you can create a password and, and, and be granted access. It's one of the things that we, we were very cautious of off the hop is we didn't want to build a tool that would be too widely available in case uh, folks want to use it for with nefarious intent. So, um, so that's, that's the process there. So I guess that's that's what I've got. Um, we we got a bunch of workshops on the go. Please, you know, watch your emails for the for those invites. Uh, one thing we are working on is building an events calendar into the CFGA website, so you'll be able to see when those workshops are being launched uh, in the coming weeks and months. So, any questions on that project, Heather, Francois, Karen? Anything that I missed that we need to bring up on that one? I think you did a really good summary, uh, Cedric. I think, um, yeah, a great overview. Maybe um, just mentioning that it's uh, this this uh, tool is really uh, versatile. I mean, the framework itself is is what's transported between provinces and whatnot. But uh, each province is unique in their, uh, I guess, their language, their uh, the species that they're dealing with, and uh, uh, and 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 also how we want to interact with producers. So, so this is uh, the tool allows for, for that flexibility and uh, adjust that to, uh, to your local or uh, provincial needs. 
Excellent. Thanks for that, Francois. Heather, maybe uh, a minute or two on what we're trying to do with, with the database files and the ultimate goal of, of building that searchable database. On mute, Heather. Mm -hmm. The database uh, project was built on around investigating agriculture practices and their impacts on species at risk. And so that having that searchable database allows people who are working in this either from a ag perspective or a conservation perspective can look into this database and get specifically to that interface of agriculture and, and uh, biodiversity basically. So we hope to be able to expand that and allow people to uh, feed literature into that. Right now it's a, it's a fairly large uh, system and we're trying to get an interface going so that people can access it uh, more readily. So that anybody interested in, you know, how would this particular um, practice impact uh, my biodiversity, any particular species at risk, that sort of thing can be searched in that database. Excellent. Thanks, Heather.